The Arabian Nubian Shield is an exposure of Precambrian crystalline rocks on the flanks of the Red Sea. It is a vast territory with new, underexplored mining opportunities. It is an extensive prehistoric ancient geological formation dating to the earliest part of Earth's history, 1 billion to 541 million years ago. In geologic terms, it is called Neoproterozoic. It is a vast expanse of land on Earth. The Red Sea is in the middle of the Nubian Shield, dividing it into two parts. The western part of the Nubian Shield is in Africa. From north to south, the western half of the shield includes the African nations of Egypt, Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. The eastern half of the shield is a vast area on the western part of the Arabian Peninsula, including Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Israel. The region was the focus of major global powers for centuries. France, Britain, Italy, and the Ottoman Empire have a long history of competing to control the region. After World War II and during the Cold War, the region's growth potential was limited. After the Cold War ended, there appeared to be a potential for the U.S. to play a dominant role. However, since the Arab Spring, attitudes, strategies, and geopolitical formations have transformed. Today, the emergence of the multipolar world is driving exploration for rare earth minerals in one of the world's most strategic areas. The region has a rich mining history. The evidence of mining in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Eritrea, and Yemen existed more than 5,000 years ago. The presence of a wide array of essential rare earth minerals in the Arabian Shield is widely known. The ability and opportunity to exploit these vast resources is now a reality. As a result, the Nubian Shield is the next biggest mining destination in the world. These developments raise many questions. What is going on in the region? How can the nations take part in this? Who is doing what? Etc. We will address the potential for the region by country. Please make sure to subscribe, share, like and comment so we can provide more. Saudi Arabia In 1998 near Thaj, a town in the northeastern part of Saudi Arabia, archaeologists discovered an ancient tomb. This royal tomb dated to the 1st century AD and appeared to be of a young woman with gold ornaments and a gold mask. Gold mining in Saudi Arabian history is ancient. Today, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia aims to be at the forefront, taking a holistic approach to developing the kingdom by moving away from hydrocarbon to clean energy. Using its vast riches, Saudi Arabia plans to become a key player. The kingdom has launched a new Middle East Green Initiative to reach net-zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2060. The Middle East Green Initiative announced by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman aims to plant 50 billion trees globally. 10 billion are in Saudi Arabia, designed to capture more carbon dioxide and slow desertification for a more sustainable future. Saudi Arabia aims to produce 50% of its energy from renewable sources by 2030. The government of Saudi Arabia aims to be one of the world's leading hydrogen producers. It has signed a deal to supply and install a 2 gigawatts plus electrolysis plant for one of its most significant green hydrogen projects. It will be located in Saudi Arabia's future city of Neom, a linear city under development. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is doing all it can to ensure a favorable transparent mining ecosystem to become competitive and lead the future of the new clean energy-based economy. Saudi Arabia expects to see more intensive mining and plans to decarbonize. It intends to use the latest mining and mineral processing technology. In March 2018, the Saudi Energy Ministry announced that the kingdom had allocated $1.3 trillion worth of mining resources for new mines with advanced technologies to quadruple the size of its mining, renewables, and logistics sectors. The KSA wants technology to play a significant role in increasing the mineral supply. The kingdom aims to ensure that future mines be more attractive for young people. Saudi Arabia has conducted extensive studies, gathered comprehensive geological and exploration information over the last 80 years, and combined it into a new national database called the National Geological Database. As a result, information is now easily accessible from anywhere. This is a prerequisite to increasing the rate of development of the mining and minerals industry. In addition to oil and downstream petrochemical production, the KSA plans to make mining the third pillar of its economy. The Ministry of Energy, Industry, and Mineral Resources aim to increase the mining's contribution to GDP from $3 billion in five years to $64 billion by 2030 and generate more than 25,000 new jobs in the industry. 
the kingdom has found critical minerals such as tantalum, vanadium, rhes, and niobium. As a result, Saudi Arabia wants to develop copper, lithium, and nickel deposits to become a part of the future economy in the area of electric vehicles. The kingdom has iron ore and bauxite deposits for steel and aluminum industries, zinc for steel galvanizing, and titanium for lightweight alloys. The massive oil and gas reserves in Saudi Arabia get the most attention. After all, the kingdom's wealth is directly related to the abundance of fossil fuels across its vast desert. The kingdom is transforming its economy and approach to development and is ready to use its resources to become a manufacturer of natural products and create jobs. As part of the grand strategy, the KSA has released its Vision 2030, calling it an ambitious vision for an ambitious nation. Vision 2030 was announced in 2019 and planned to develop a diversified economy through liberalization and foreign investment and not be heavily dependent on oil. For example, traditionally, Saudi Arabia was not a tourism-oriented economy. Vision 2030 plans to change it with six giga projects, including the Red Sea Development Project, a plan to build 50 hotels with 500,000 new hotel rooms, an international airport, and an eco-focused luxury site comprising 22 islands and plans to complete by 2030. The kingdom plans to invest $8 billion in entertainment, sports, and the arts to build an ultra-luxury wellness, resort open-air archaeological, cultural, and touristic complex area along the northwestern Red Sea coast. The kingdom is keen to invest $50 billion in development on the northwestern edge of Riyadh that will have museums, retail, outdoor attractions, and more than 100 restaurants. The KSA is to issue its first leisure travel visas to Westerners for the first time. The vision includes a cruise program to develop ports to attract cruise ships to the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf ports. Saudi Arabia is committed to investing in creating a more diverse and sustainable economy, using its strategic location to build its role as an integral driver of international trade and to connect three continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. The kingdom is set for an explosion of exploration and mining. It has an impressive infrastructure. It already has a clear path and is readying to take advantage. With all these development projects, the economic and physical transformation of the region is imminent. As part of these grand strategies, the kingdom is also building a rail network linking Saudi Arabia to Gulf nations. The project is coordinated with the Gulf nations through the Gulf Cooperation Council (GCC). Each GCC country will be responsible for the building and costs of establishing the rail link within its borders, according to the Ministry of Transport and Logistic Services in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The rail system will enable Saudi Arabia to establish a network linking the holy mosques of Mecca and Medina, a bridge connecting the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea, and a rail network linking the northern and southern parts of the country. As the home of the two holy mosques, the kingdom is the heart of the Arab and Islamic worlds. Egypt Egypt's history as a metal-using culture extends deep into the past. Dating back to the Pharaonic period, Egypt has done more in the mining technologies and the working of metals. Copper and gold tools and ornaments date back to the pre-dynastic period. Egyptian artisans have produced many beautiful treasures and practical tools as a power and a living culture. Egypt's mining industry has been underdeveloped for a long time. Egypt lacked a favorable mining investment environment because of laws that disincentivized investors. The government of Egypt is determined to change it. Egypt sees an opportunity and believes the international demand for rare earth minerals will transform its economy. With Saudi Arabia leading the way, the area is changing and Egypt wants to remain competitive. Egypt has many mineral resources, including zinc, platinum, gold, copper, silver, and other precious base metals to accommodate investors. In January 2017, the Egyptian Mineral Resources Authority announced various changes for exploring and extracting gold in multiple locations throughout Egypt. Egyptian investors and economists are hopeful and expect that the country's new mining law will open the way for more mineral exploration and extraction investments. After Egypt issued the amendment and the executive regulations, international investors and mining companies have expressed strong interest in the mining sector. Eritrea The ongoing regional development projects will bring massive investment opportunities for the Red Sea countries. It will create enormous investment and employment opportunities for people from the region. 
Eritrea is one of the least developed nations in the region because of continued wars and persistent pressure from the U.S. that included sanctions designed to cripple the nation. However, despite all the hostilities, Eritrea has successfully set the stage for a future mining bonanza. Eritrea is making headways and making inroads significantly. In addition, Eritrea has a diverse climate, a favorable investment environment, and a hospitable and industrious population free from corruption. After Saudi Arabia, Eritrea has the longest coastline in the Red Sea. Eritrea has varied mineral resources. Currently, Eritrea only has two mines in operation, Bisha and Zara, extracting gold, copper, zinc. Eritrea has many mineral deposits that are yet to be exploited. Various geological works and investigations have proved that Eritrea possesses essential minerals. Eritrea's mineral resources include gold, zinc, copper, oil, potash, limestone, gypsum, iron ore, and natural gas. 70% of Eritrea's greenbelt is precious and base metal. Eritrea also can produce ornamental marble and granite. Eritrea is an emerging gold-producing country in Africa planning to develop four mines to make gold, copper, potash, and zinc. Eritrea's potash mine in the Danakil Depression is completed and expected to produce about 10,000 tons daily. Eritrea represents one of the global lowest cost, shallowest, and most advanced greenfield sulfate potash development projects. Kalyoli is the shallowest evaporite deposit. Mineralization starts at just 60 meters, allowing for open-cut mining. It is outstanding grades and an extended mine life estimated to be approximately 200 years. Eritrea is attractive for mining because of its proximity to the coast and global markets, favorable climate, human resources, and a cooperative government that works well with investors. Sudan it is a country with uranium ores in the area of the Nuba Mountains and at Hufrat and Nahas in southern Kurdjafin. Uranium reserves are also believed to exist near the western borders of Chad and the Central African Republic. Sudan possesses many minerals and vast agricultural and hydrocarbon resources. Gold, salt, and chrome are some commercially exploited resources. Barite, tungsten, and substantial quantities of marble, gypsum graphite, and calcium stone are abundant and used in cement manufacture. The list of minerals available in Sudan is massive. It also has iron deposits, asbestos, talc ore, chrome, mica, and manganese ore deposits, fluorire, tin, feldspar, kaolin, polymetallic sulfides, kyanite, and diamond. Gold is abundant. Sudan has a large agricultural land, and the Nile, Yemen. Yemen is located at the southern end of the Arabian Peninsula in Western Asia, with an area of approximately 203,850 square miles. Yemen has a vast coastline that stretches over 1,200 miles on the borders of the Red Sea, the Gulf of Eden, and the Arabian Sea. Yemen has a rich reserve of minerals such as gold, copper, lead, nickel, coal, rock salt, and petroleum. Yemen has natural gas, oil, fertile land, and vast metal resources, including silver, gold, copper, zinc, cobalt, and nickel. Yemen also has many non-metal resources or industrial mineral deposits. It includes limestone, scoria, magnesite, sandstone, marble, perlite, dolomite, feldspar, celestine, and gypsum. Ethiopia Ethiopia has untapped diverse, and vast mineral resources that offer substantial potential opportunities for exploration and development. These include tantalum, potash, gemstones, gold, iron ore, industrial, energy, and construction minerals. The resources discovered in different regions of Ethiopia are mainly gold, iron, salt, potash, soda ash, gemstones, coal, tantalum, phosphorus, geothermal, and natural gas. Ethiopia has platinum, copper, nickel, manganese, niobium, molybdenum, and marble found in most parts of the country. Ethiopia's population, human resources, and vast riches that include the Nile make the Nubian Shield countries a hot spot and destination for future world growth. In summary, the future of the Nubian Shield countries is bright. A diversified economy, mining, tourism, and technological advances will transform the region. The region is rich in history, with a diverse climate. It is an attractive tourist destination and religious center. It is located in one of the most strategic locations and busiest trade routes in the world. 
the region could easily and quickly develop, mainly if the region's nations cooperate, collaborate, and coordinate to elevate each other's programs. The region's growing population, human resources, and vast riches, including the Nile, make the Nubian Shield countries a hotspot and destination.